I recently had a comment on the website asking how do you find veins? I guess they were having a little difficulty actually just like finding veins. The technique, they understood all of it, but sometimes it's just hard. It's just hard to find those veins, get that first step. So what I wanted to do is take a little bit of time and just talk to you about how I go about finding veins. Now, I like to place my patients into two categories. You have your fluffy patient and you have your non-fluffy patient. The fluffy patient or the patient with the slightly higher BMI, they usually have phenomenal veins in their forearm. They have like so many veins in the forearm that you can stick like a 14 gauge catheter in. So with those fluffy patients, I usually stick a tourniquet pretty much you know, same place I would with a non-fluffy patient, about right here, and then give them a little bit of time for those veins to plump up while I'm getting everything ready. And I'll go ahead and just like look in the forearm. I'll just look, start about right here and go all the way down um, the arm. And usually I'm able to find something there. The reason why I focus in on the forearm in these fluffy patients is because they usually have great veins. It's just there's too much adipose tissue between their skin and the vein for you to be able to feel it under landmark guidance or see it. So they have great veins, but I usually start in the forearm with those patients. Now, if you have the non-fluffy patient, you have the IV drug user, you have the uh, patient who's a you know, diabetic on dialysis, sickle cell disease, lupus, all of these other reasons for people to have difficult IV access, I'll definitely look in the forearm because occasionally I get lucky and I find a great vein there. But these guys, I'm usually going in the upper arm. Now in the upper arm, there's basically four vessels that are grouped into three different areas that you can look for. You have your cephalic, which is on the lateral aspect of the arm. You have your basilic, which is on the medial aspect of the arm. And then you have your brachials, which there are usually two brachial veins that surround the brachial artery um, in the middle of the arm. Now, I'm gonna tell you my order of preference. If I can choose, I would love a cephalic every single time on the outside of that bicep muscle. The reason why I like that one so much is because it is just on the outside, it's right here, and the patients, they when they kind of move around, they're sleeping, what happens sometimes with the basilic, which I'll talk about the basilic in a little bit, is it's right here, it's kind of uncomfortable, it kind of rubs on their side a little bit, right? So I love the cephalic, but that one's usually the smallest. So if you find a cephalic, please go for it, but no, it's usually the smallest. Now, if you're just starting out, the basilic, the one that sits right here, this one is probably the easiest one to go for. There's no big nerves in that area, there's no arteries in that area, and it's usually nice and straight, and if you have like an IV drug user, for whatever reason, that one is one that they don't usually puncture on their own. It's usually a pretty fresh vein. The only caveat to that is once you get a little bit better, I would steer away from the basilic vein because that's the one, if patients are gonna need pick lines in the future, that's the one that they usually use. So I like to kind of reserve that for future use for other people. Now the brachial, you have those two brachial veins right here that surround your brachial artery. Now this one is great, but I would caution you to make sure not to go in the fold right here. So think about the arm like this. If you do your cannulation right in this area, so I'm just kind of having a hard time to use my pen here. If you bring it in in this kind of a location, now you bring that catheter in this way, it's gonna be very difficult for you to kind of scoop that catheter and go up, right? So what you wanna do is go in this area right here above the anticube or below the anticube. That way it's much easier to slide that catheter in and if you go here, it's easier to slide that catheter in. If you are going right at the anticube, getting in that back angle is gonna be a little bit too tricky. It's gonna be hard and you're much more likely to poke through that posterior wall. That was part one of how to approach your patient with difficult IV access and which veins to choose, focusing in on just the upper arm. Now, in the next video, which hopefully I'll be able to send out in a couple of days, I'm gonna talk about what to do when you can't get any upper arm veins. In the meantime, if you want to scan with us live and in person in Bend, Oregon, we have a couple of spots left on the registration for BendFest 2019. The website is bendfest19.com. And if you're interested in an online ultrasound fellowship, check out ultrasoundleadershipacademy.com.